Hello and welcome back. This is episode 2 the Barrel White Lord, and I hope you enjoyed my last video. If you don't remember me talking about Guardians, then you would like to see them introduced, but they never will. Um, I was serious about that, so let me know what you guys think. This episode is about Barrel White Lord. He is one of the DLC characters. He is an enchanter, but this match I'm going to play him a little bit differently. I'm going to go with damage. And the reason for that is because Barrel White Lord has a passive ability called Spirit Drain. Draining the will of his victims, the Barrel White Lord reduces an enemy's ability resistance by 4% for 4 seconds with every blow and deals an additional 10 ability damage for each match level gained. That is huge. Now, when I first played Barrel White Lord, with his draining soul ability and his uh, Barrow's torment, I thought, hey, maybe ability lifesteal was the way to go. <clears throat> and I will have a video. There's not just one way to play each guardian, so I will get back to other guardians in the future. But the other reason with his passive is that it has the chance to crit. So the first relic I chose was the Morble Knife Relic. And with each hit that you don't get a critical strike, you get 10% more critical chance. Meaning, each hit that you make on an enemy increases your critical strike chance by 10% until you hit a critical strike. So, that's very huge, especially with his passive. And his basic attack is nothing special, but when you have a crit on both of those, it'll add up to be a lot of damage. And with his one ability, which is Chilling Touch, you will gain 50% attack speed for 8 seconds, and your movement speed will be increased by 35% for 5, which will really let you get a lot of damage in, in a short amount of time. And You'll see by the end of the video how fast I'm able to just tear through enemy guardians. It's not a belt that I really see anybody else ever use, so it's kind of a secret that I'm showing you. Now, since I'm running a damage belt, this is important, there's two abilities that I really compete with on leveling up first, but since I'm running damage, I'm going to level up Chilling Touch first. And what that does is like I said earlier, it increases my attack speed from 20% up until 50 when fully leveled for 8 seconds and movement speed up to 35 for 5 seconds when fully leveled. And the faster I can level this up with my damage, basically the more damage I do faster. And then the second ability that I like to level up after that is Barrow's Torment. Now with running no AP, this isn't going to do too much, but early game it'll still have its effect. And what that does, it targets an enemy guardian or creature, only one, that it put, inflicts 20, scaling up to 100 ability damage initially, and then following that, 12 damage, scaling up to 40, per, 40 damage per second for five seconds. Now the second relic you'll see on my belt later on is White Tree Relic. And what that does, it's a basic attack deals plus one damage for each one percent of health you are missing. So with Barrow's ultimate ability, it's triggered for five seconds. And well how that's gonna work with his undeath ability is that if it gives me one damage for each one percent of health missing, when I'm at zero health and undeath, it's gonna give me an extra hundred damage. That's also going to crit on top of my already existing damage, making me uh, really a, a wrecking ball. Uh, an enchanter that does melee damage that you don't want to be against, which is a very unique thing. Now, the last relic I have fitted on my belt is White's Touch. And what that does is for every one second your next basic attack will have 45 penetration. So this will effectively give me a lot more damage later in the game against guardians that have high resistance and also penetration gives you more damage against towers 
which is something that not a lot of players in this game know about. Now when I when I use my chilling touch ability and gain that attack speed, it's not gonna proc every single hit. It's gonna proc about every hit because I'm hitting more than once per second. But it really lets me do a lot more damage when my abilities are on their cooldown. And it also gives me another 5% cooldown reduction gem, which is very helpful when you're running the Barrel White Lord. Now, as you can see here, I've been playing pretty aggressively so far, and that's because they've really been pretty afraid of me. Uh, every time I get near them, they kind of start to back off a little bit, and that's because they're starting to realize that, hey, this guy is doing a lot of damage. And you can see how often with that relic, the Morbid Knife Relic, that I am actually getting my critical strikes. You can see there we did get the Goblin King, who I played in my first video as he was trying to heal. And now we're going to get Eldir as well. Now, <clears throat> this is a very important note I want to make to new players, and maybe players that have already been making this game, because it's something that is even hard for me, who has been playing this game for a long time. It's when to abandon your tower. Now that Eldir there, he was kind of sitting under his tower like it was going to save him from anything that came near him. But there's one thing you really got to know, and that is if you're outnumbered by more than one enemy guardian, you really have to start to make a decision on when you're going to leave your tower behind, because you don't want to let them kill the tower and you. That's definitely something you're not wanting to do. Not just because when you die it gives them more experience, which you don't want in the beginning of the match, but it's also going to reduce your experience, because you are going to be dead and you have to sit on that waiting screen so you can respawn and you're missing on probably two creep waves at that point in time. So you are at a pretty big disadvantage. Now letting your tower die is not easy. A lot of players think that letting your tower die is something that's really frowned upon, but it's it's really an important decision. And if you think about it, as do I want my tower to die and me live, or my tower to die and me die also? Phrasing the question like that might help you make the decision a lot faster. Now the green gems that I use in my my belt, the white tree belt, I chose a basic attack resistance and then my second green gem in there is, um, is ability resistance. And the reason for this was just because the Barrel White Lord has a pretty low resistance for each, for both basic attack and ability. So I decided I just kind of boosted up there a little bit. Because I am more in range with Guardians than opposed to maybe a AP loadout Barrel White Lord. So it's really your decision. Maybe you want to go with some health gems, make your health a little longer. But I just decided to go with some resistance to make it a little bit harder to kill me. And since I don't have that much health, it also makes my my smaller amount of health pool worth a little more, if it makes sense to that way as well. So I start to back off. I see that Goblin King was on my radar. So I start to go down help middle lane out. So I start engaging. I got knocked up. They used their lane on me, so I return the favor. And you can see that my one melee hit after that just took them out, all their health. Now we're starting to get some attention here in the middle lane. We got Heldir coming in the middle, and then Hildefons chasing me down with my health. So I decided to grab a healing potion, heal up. Just because I'm the Bear White Lord doesn't mean that I necessarily want to die anytime. So then we're going to push back up the top of the tower. And of course, Hildefond was waiting for us. Now, there hasn't been too much team fighting going on, and that's partly due to I joined Battleground solo and that my other players don't have a mic. But you can see how helpful it is, even if yourself, for joining into a Battlegrounds by yourself, just kind of hanging tight next to an ally, even if they all don't want to stick next to each other. So I'm helping my creeps in the middle lane push up. I can see that they left middle lane unattended, and I do have a pretty significant level difference. So I'm going to go for this middle tower on my own. 
right after I clear out the waves. Just a matter of time before I take this tower down. So I decided to go after the Goblin King. It's reaching towards his tower, but then I saw there was three others there. I decided, hey, why not just get a little reckless and have some fun? So I end up taking their tower out. I didn't need to die right there, but sometimes when I'm the Barrel White Lord, it's just fun to go into your undeath and just wreak havoc. Now, I'm not sure if it says it in his bio, but Barrel White Lord does have a bit of a shorter respawn time, just like Felgrim. I'm starting to level up the barracks. I always like to go with the stronghold because it does, in the end, do more damage. I do like the splash damage on the enemy creeps as well as the damage that they do on the enemy towers as well. And they also take a bit of hits before you can take them down so they might get one or two hits on the enemy tower or some enemy guardians before they're taken down. So after leveling that all up, heading back in the middle lane where I see some of my teammates gathering and I decide, just in case we die, to level up that outermost tower in the event that we all get wiped. Which is not something I'm planning on, but just to be safe. So I saw Haldir up here. He was probably trying to assist his, his wave of creeps. And he just took the top shrine. So me and Golem both saw him on our radar and we decided to go up there. And he is nowhere to be seen. So I go back down, and whoop, what do you know? On my radar, he's right back by the creeps again. So I'm able to grab him, and just takes three hits, and he's down. You can see how powerful that his chilling touch is. It just grabs him, and not only that it slows him down, it also makes your movement speed and attack speed faster. It's such an awesome ability. Another great relic to run with Barrel White Lord, which I usually run, is the. Um, it's called Wilderland Hunter's Relic. And it, while there used to be a distance on it, it's now zero. It's while there are no ally guardians within zero meters, you gain plus 2% attack speed per level, plus 15% movement speed, and 2% critical chance per level. Now, this is a really good relic for Barrel White Lord. It ju I just don't happen to be running at this run, at this match. And you could either pair it with the White Tree Relic that I'm running in this class, or something else that I like to run is the Anvil of Isengard, which used to be a four slot red relic. And what that does is your basic attack deals an extra three damage per level to enemy targets below 50% health. And that's really great stacking with the critical chance and stacking with Barrel White Lord's kind of low basic attack damage, you're going to really be boosting your basic attack damage on top of his ability damage that he does on the melee. So you'll be doing a lot more as far as critical strike damage goes. When I'm running the Barrel White Lord with AP, then I, what I like to do is run the Winding Stair Relic which gives you ability power is increased by three for each one percent health you're missing so when you go into your own death you get a max you get a total of 300 ability power and then i usually pair that with fell riders or westerners the reason for that is because that the barrel white lord has such a high ap conversion rate he has 0.7 i think that's the highest out of any guardian for uh, their abilities if you go with the Fall Riders, which is just straight AP, then you'll do very good against Strikers. But if you go, if you're playing against a lot of Warriors, and maybe other Enchanters and Defenders, you're going to do a lot more damage with that penetration. As you can see here, we started to group up on that kill. I take out the Barracks. They never leveled it up. Now it's just a matter of clearing creeps. I'm starting to back off. I want to grab a couple more health before I return. 
if we're making a good push, I definitely don't want to die at this point. You can see that Bilbo just used his ultimate, really decimated us. But I was able to just take him out in two hits with my melee damage. Uncle Tony got himself a pretty big mess. And Hildefons did use his ultimate, which ended up doing a lot of damage to us. As you saw there, the Great Goblin had used his ultimate, which knocked me up in the air. And when you're in your undeath ability as the Barrow White Lord, every second counts. Every second really matters. And if you get knocked up or you get rooted or knocked back, it's really going to really gonna be hard to recover from that. One of the guardians that I always like to be when I match up against Barrow White Lord is Legolas, and that's because Legolas has a very good ability for knocking the Barrow White Lord back and pretty much making his undeath useless. With his ability of Elven Onslaught, it just knocks you back, lowers your resistance, which doesn't matter for Barrow White Lord's sake. But that knockback really sets you far, and unless you have a lot of movement speed to be able to get back into range with your abilities, you're pretty much out of the picture and not going to get a kill after you go into your ultimate ability. So I saw that my teammate was in trouble. I decided to try to help him out as best I could, but I got caught and Hilda Fons is blind. So I went down there, held Baragond, and then I wrapped back up around. They were starting to group up together for a team fight, and this is just a uh, group of... You've got to be careful when going into a big group like that, but one of the things that I love doing with uh, Barrow White Lord is when you run into a big team like that, and you die and you just start hitting their health when they're all grouped together like that, hitting multiple guardians at once, you could really take down their health, do a ton of damage, and they're not able to do a thing about it unless they have a, a blind or a silence. So you can see we're trying to pull the last wave here, trying to knock down a final tower. I grab Haldir. Now if I was any other guardian it would be over after I got that kill, but then I Ended up killing Bilbo too after that, and I could have got Hildefons, but I really wasn't paying attention there. That was a poor call on me, but we, I was able to help take down that top tower, which will help a lot towards ending this match. And then it looks like we're about to finish that last bottom tower. Golem got caught up in there with his ultimate. That's one thing you got to be careful about with Golem and Ogluck, is using your ultimate and just going the wrong way getting stuck under the tower. Now like I mentioned before, I will revisit some of these characters because there are other loadouts that I really want to get back to and explore. And there's not just one way to run each guardian. I really want to get back and do a AP Barrow White Lord after I cover some other guardians. But I just wanted to show you maybe something different, maybe something refreshing that you haven't really seen as far as a Barrow White Lord goes. So I'm following Hildefons back up. We're trying to make our push again. You can really see how much damage I can do when I get that critical off. It's very important to try to clear their, their creeps as fast as you can so we can try to get as much of a wave in there at once as possible, make it really hard for them to manage their lane. So I went down there, tried to speed things up down on the bottom lane. Now it's just the two of us. We really shouldn't be getting that close to the tower, but it was so close to dying. Holdefans was able to use his ultimate and just blow it up. And then I was feeling pretty safe because of all the traps he let down. But then in the end it ended up dying, but in the end I got two kills, which I was happy about. I am playing a little reckless for a Barrel White Lord, but I do have 13 kills, and I'm pretty happy with that. And 6 tower kills. I did play a little bit reckless at times, but one of the great funs of being the Barrel White Lord is being able to use your undeath ability and kill other guardians from the grave. And I did have fun making this video, guys, so please feel free to leave your comments of what kind of loadout you use for the Barrel White Lord. And please subscribe. I hope you watch my future videos. 
I'm going to cover every Guardian that I can more than once and do some other videos as well. If you guys can check out my next video, I greatly appreciate it. Leave some comments in the comments area. Thank you.